on. Hang on one second. Hello everyone and happy Rhinebeck weekend. Um, my name is Chelsea. I am one half of this YouTube channel. Um, I am half of the uh, Legacy Fiber Arts dyeing team and um, I wanted to come to you today just as a little bonus Rhinebeck episode. Mom and I have tried tirelessly <laughs> to try and find a little time for us to podcast um, and it just it hasn't been working out. I have two little ones. She has a brand new puppy, plus all of the dying for this season. Um, so I apologize that we have not been able to come to you together um, in quite some time. We are definitely still working on it. We will get a podcast out with the two of us very soon. But I thought, since this is a really fun and special weekend for the making industry, um, I would come to you and give you a few updates about some of my making, um, as well as some little bonus family footage from this past week, um, just to keep you company as you're home or wherever you are, uh, knitting and, um, just enjoying the autumn. So, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. This is so, I, it's, I, I'm not used to being here alone when it's a Legacy Knits podcast. So um, anyways, what I thought I would do today is show you two of my most recent projects that came off of the needles, um, as well as um, a little bit of mending that I have been doing, as well as my favorite work in progress. So lately, so first, okay, so first I should talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Spring Cleaning Shawl by Stephen West. I knit this out of almost all Legacy Fiber Arts yarn. Um, it is a pattern of his, I haven't blocked it yet. Um, it is a pattern of his that I was not privy to until um, right before I cast it on. I was looking for um, a palette cleanser project to really kind of get my knitting mojo back. This was a couple months ago maybe even a few months ago at this point um and as i was perusing his pattern library i came across this which looked manageable enough to knit um and it had miles and miles of garter thank you i have the best husband in the world delivered me some fresh coffee <laughs> let me tell you quarantining while parenting has been a challenge. It's been a blessing. It's been a lot of things. And um, Justin and I have really learned to lean on each other during this time. Um, I don't know if anybody else has been experiencing. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, just that strain on the relationships you have with all of the people under your own roof. It's, um, it's a lot to be together 24 seven, seven days a week, <laughs> um, with very little outside, um, interaction. So, um, anyways, I'm just rambling. He brought me some fresh made coffee. <laughs> I love him so much for it because I need it. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Hopefully I get this up today. Um, and it has been a busy morning. So I'm afraid to sip it, it's pretty hot. Got the... Oh, that's good. Um, so anyways, yes, I had, so it had miles and miles of garter, which was exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for something modular because I didn't wanna just be using the same colorway for hours and hours and hours um it has these gorgeous yarn over sections with contrasting colors um and it has an i-cord bind off which you'll carry up the sides you can see hopefully it has just been such it, it was such a joy to knit i love wearing it it goes with all of my knits that i've been working on this year um 
so yeah it's a really great stash buster too um if you have you know half skeins or even quarter skeins that you have just kind of sitting in your stash um it's great for like the smaller sections this took almost no yarn this point right here um this is our fox paws colorway it's in a variety of different bases i have some singles i have some cozy toes i have some steel toes um this is a hedgehog fibers colorway right here this minty pinky one uh the yellow is golden ticket from our polar express colorway a couple christmases ago this is our hush puppy colorway right here this is our peaches and cream colorway right here and then i had a skein of stress knits yarn in my stash that I had been wanting to use and it fit the palette perfectly. So I believe this is her succulents colorway. Um, I love Stacy's yarn so much, but this is a perfect example. So I had knit an Oslo hat mohair edition by Petite Knit out of this skein of yarn paired with a, one of her mohair colorways, which I believe was eucalyptus. Um, I'll put my project page down below for that hat and I'll stick a picture of it here so that you guys know what I'm talking about. But so I had about 50 grams left after I knit that hat, maybe a little less. So as I was knitting this very large section of garter, I got to the end and I lost my game of yarn chicken. So I pulled that skein of hedgehog fibers that I used for that uh, center section and I finished it off with the hedgehog fibers. And you know what? When I wear it around my neck, you really can't tell. Um, and then I should say also, the color over here is Palm Lines, which is another one of Stacy's colorways. She describes it as a barely there pink, and I think it is the perfect description of this colorway. And she gifted me that skein. She is a patron over on my um, Patreon page. Um, and she heard me talking about how I was, I had my eye on one of those skeins because I wanted to use it specifically for this section of the shawl and she sent it to me with a sweet note um so i just will always remember that um when i wear this because i just and i remember it being one of those weeks where it was pretty challenging and um and then i got that in the mail and it just put me in such a great mood so that is what i'm wearing i also have a project page for this that i will link down below for anybody that is curious the ends are pretty long so i tend to tie them <laughs> i don't know if anybody else does that with a really long shawl but i don't know it works for me um so yes that's what i'm wearing now this you know what i'm not even gonna start this because i'm gonna finish the end of the row so that i can show it to you in all of its glory um over this year i have been diving into other forms of making as well I've been having a really great time in the kitchen. Um, I purchased myself an Instant Pot, so I've been really getting to know that appliance and all of the amazing things that it can do. Um, we've been making our own applesauce, which has been really fun, and Charlie loves it. Loves homemade applesauce, so we've been doing that. Um, so that has been a really fun way to kind of be creative while also being productive. Uh, so when Justin finishes up with work for the day, he'll come up from his office and um, take the girls either outside or play with them in the house if it's raining. Um, and I'll head into the kitchen with a new recipe and some ingredients and just have a fun time kind of navigating around the kitchen um, and playing with spices and different meats and different vegetables. And then not only have I been creative, but I've also made dinner. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a nice two for one. That being said, that isn't every day. I don't want it to seem like, oh, I'm making a homemade dinner every day. I'm talking once or twice a week. Other than that, it's very simple meals. It's nothing crazy, but. Um, so I've been really enjoying just spending time in the kitchen. I have also started mending clothing, which is kind of cool. I've talked a lot more about this over on my Patreon page, but I want to show you the project that I'm in the middle of now that I think is really, really neat. Um, I need to finish them because I want to be wearing them and um, I don't know, I'm a little bit, I'm not stuck, I just, 
am enjoying knitting so much that I have let this project just kind of fall to the wayside, which I'm bummed about because again, I want to be wearing them. Sorry, I just want to finish this row before I show them to you. Um, it's so weird to think that last year at this time we were knitting in hotel rooms or hotel lobbies or benches or coffee shops within the town of Rhinebeck and man I'm grateful to be in a place where I'm healthy and safe um, knitting with you guys sharing this experience but I will say man I miss I miss seeing you all I miss being able to give you a hug and I miss being able to help you pick out yarn I miss oh, I do miss it all which is a big thing for me to say because I am a an extreme introvert um, I, I consider myself a social introvert so when I'm around people I have an easy time socializing but it takes me getting to the people <laughs> so the introvert in me is always so reluctant to leave a safe quiet space but anyways so yes for me to be sitting here saying man I really miss it is is huge <laughs> but anyway um okay i got to the end of my row so i'll talk about this after i'm done talking about my mending so i started i don't even know what got me really curious about mending but i remember um an account that i follow on instagram is called the far woods i'll put their instagram name instagram handle here on the screen um and they recently within this past year released this gorgeous book called mending life and it is it's just a gorgeous book full of gorgeous illustrations and so many phenomenal you'll see i have dog ears everywhere in this book um it it just it tells you how to patch uh down jackets and denim and um uh oh my gosh it's all i'm blanking but elbows on sweaters and um darning socks and just all of those really beautiful ways to preserve clothing uh, that have kind of fallen by the wayside i know there's a community out there a large community that still practices all of these things and um that's phenomenal but for me i feel like i have not really been privy to this of course i know that it's a possibility to mend your clothes it just has always felt to me like this world of fast fashion that we live in always just promotes the throw it out and get new um which there is definitely a time and place and reason to do that as well but for me for the clothes that i have in my wardrobe i really love everything i have in my wardrobe and i have a pretty small wardrobe um so when i came across this book i thought to myself wow what an amazing way to never have to shop for clothes again. <laughs> I hate shopping for clothes. It is the thing I dislike the most. Um, I just, it's boring to me. It's very boring. So um, anyways, so then I saw this book and I thought that's my answer. So I picked it up. It took me a few months to really kind of gather my materials and get ready to start doing the work. But I have started. I um, mended a pair of Justin's shorts which if i still have the footage of i'll put here um which was basically just back stitching all along this like butt flap <laughs> on a pair of ll bean shorts that had come loose just the stitching had worn away so i just hand stitched it which i know i could have done it with a sewing machine i my sewing machine hasn't been set up yet it is brand spanking new and that is going to take so much brain power and energy and space to do that um I just wanted to get it done. I wanted to fix his shorts in the middle of the summer because he wore them every day, regardless of the fact that there was a piece of fabric hanging off of them. Um, so I fixed them for him and then I moved on to my overalls. Now, if you guys have ever met me or seen me in Rhinebeck or Needles Up, you will know that I live in my denim overalls. I love them. I've had them for seven plus years, I think. 
I purchased them originally at Old Navy. They were a distressed style of denim. So there were some small holes in the knees um, that over time became huge flaps of denim, just like hanging off of my leg, <laughs> similar to Justin's butt flap. <laughs> so I made it my mission to fix those because I have so many great memories. I wore those when I was pregnant with Lily in 2008 or 2017 when we went to Rhinebeck and um, just, I, I love them. I love my overalls so much. Um, but so sorry, I wanted to show you some of these other illustrations. So like really learning how to repair knitwear. Um, anyways, purchase the book if you're at all interested, because if nothing else, it's a beautiful resource to have on your coffee table. Um, the, I don't know if you can tell, it's actually like raised. All of this beautiful texture is raised so you can feel it. Um, so my overalls, I'm going to show them to you. I'm so proud of what I've done so far and it's not going to take me too much longer to finish it up, but here it is. So I patched it with a piece of white linen, um, and some gold Seshiko thread. And as you can see here, I've started doing the little plus signs here. And so once I finish those plus signs, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do plus signs all the way across or if I'm going to kind of do a, a diagonal fill of plus signs and then have it peter out. I think the plus signs will give it a little more reinforcement in that linen knee. Um, so I think I might do all plus signs, but we will see. It was a really enjoyable process. It was a slow moving process for me because it was the first time that I'd ever darned or not darned, um, patched anything in my life. So, um, yeah, it's been a really fun process. Again, I encourage it. It reduces waste. It increases your creativity. Um, you might have a few projects sitting in your closet already without knowing it. I purchased the Sashiko thread and my needles on Amazon. If I think of it, I'll put the links down below for you. They were very affordable. I purchased both uh, navy blue and a goldenrod color. And you get five, I don't know if they're called skeins, but packets of thread. Um, and there is a difference, I guess, I can't remember off the top of my head what the difference is between sashiko thread and normal cross stitch thread. I think it's something to do with the way it's plied together. I think it's just super strong. Um, so I would recommend actually getting the sashiko thread if you're gonna take the time and energy to do this. Um, and I just had this scrap of linen fabric from a package that I received from Conscious Clothing. I ordered a uh, jumpsuit from them for the summer and spring and fall <laughs> um and they wrap all of their packages in a thick piece of linen scrap so i just i saved them and then i used it for this and i don't know i've just been really really enjoying it and i thought it would be really fun to show you my progress and yeah these overalls have seen so much i'll be so excited and of course this is like the original distressed denim, but when it comes time, if it ends up ripping more, I can do some creative things with this hole as well. So there it is. There's my darning. I really need to finish it because I want to wear them. Um, okay, now I want to show you uh, uh, a project that I just got off of my needles. Um, I still need to do a touch a little bit more of finishing. I need to weave in the ends. I've already blocked it, which is a miracle. And I need to get buttons for it. But here it is. I knit Lily a little cardigan. This is called the Old Growth Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Um, I'm sorry about the ends. I know they're kind of annoying to have to look at, but um, it is an off-center, as you can see here, it's an off-center cardigan with the button band on the left side of the body. Um, with the original way the pattern is written, it features um, a tree motif here using, um, I'm guessing yarn overs and decreases like knit two together slip slip knits. 
I didn't want that on here. I wanted it to be a little more vanilla. I wanted it to just kind of be a really simple, basic cardigan that I could throw over um, any of Lily's long sleeve shirts for the fall and the winter. Um, this is knit out of Green Mountain Spinnery's main organic worsted base in their gray colorway. I also knit my little twig sweater out of this um, yarn, so it was it was just left over. I had two skeins and it was just over the amount of yardage I needed for this sweater for Lily. So the unfortunate news is she wants nothing to do with this sweater. <laughs> I've asked her probably three times if she wants to try it on and she looks at me and says, all done mommy. So like, what am I gonna do? I don't know. Worst comes to worst, I'll wait for Charlie to grow up a little bit more and <laughs> I'll force her to wear it. Um, but I loved the process. I love the finished object. I kind of wish I just knit it for myself. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get her some really lovely wooden buttons, probably bamboo because I think you can wash bamboo buttons. Um, there will be five of them. You can see the button holes. This was my first real um, traditional button band. So I'm kind of proud of that. I'm curious to see how it works with the buttons. Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much, but anyways, I thought the decreases were really lovely. It was a really quick knit. I cast this on not long ago at all, and I've had it done for about a week. Um, maybe even longer, but I've had it blocked for a week. So yes, I would recommend this knit. I knit the size two to four year. And the great thing about Tin Can Knits Patterns is when you purchase it once, you have patterns from size newborn to, I think they have a very inclusive um, range of sizes in there. So there's a bajillion different sizes you can knit for it. So who knows, maybe I will make myself one one day. I think I would like to have this in my closet. Now, I'm gonna show you the work in progress. That has my heart right now. But first I'm gonna take a sip of coffee because I don't want it to go to waste. I'm sitting in my bedroom right now because Charlie's awake downstairs playing with Justin. Lily's in her room taking a nap. We call it quiet time because she really doesn't nap anymore. She just plays in there. We, we leave a few toys in there for her because otherwise she'll just bang on the doors or I don't know. At least this way she's using her imagination a little bit while she's in her room. Um, but she definitely has an introvert side to her. She needs that alone time to kind of recharge during the day. And the days where she doesn't have naps, it's very obvious that she needs just some quiet time. So anyway, that's where she is. And um, so I decided to tuck myself up here in a cozy little bed. I'm staring out at gorgeous leaves gorgeous gorgeous leaves speckled with like evergreen trees i love this time of year i know there's no need for me to say it because like duh um so anyways that's what i'm doing <clears throat> let me now show you my whip this is the pattern is and all of you, I am sure already have knit this and know about it. It's the Habitation Throw by the wonderful Helen Stewart, Curious Handmade. I cast it on after seeing Stacy of Stress Knits and Molly of A Homespun House. They both knit one. Um, and I saw episodes where they showed theirs off, like almost one after the other one day I was watching podcasts. And I was listening to Molly describe how she was gifting it to one of her daughters, or maybe both of her daughters. Um, and I was just sitting there, I was like, yes, I want to do that too. And I have all these mini skeins and I had my entire 2019 Legacy Fiber Arts advent calendar just sitting there staring at me for a year now. And it was a gradient, mom dyed it as a gradient. So, um, I grabbed that, I undid every single mini skein, I wound them up. I found a couple of other really bright mini skeins from our friend Liz of Trey Liz. Um, and then I went and I, I went mini diving in all of my other scrappy blanket um, bags. And I just kind of filled in some of the gaps here. So 
this one i don't even remember what it was from but i i grabbed just a whole bunch of mini skeins and it's going to be lily and charlie's rainbow blanket or rainbow fade i guess so what i'm going to do is i'm going red to orange to yellow to green to blue to purple to pink to purple to blue to green to yellow to orange to red back and forth and back and forth until i'm done so i don't i, I need to change probably to a longer cord in a little bit but anyways here I'll just kind of slowly go down so you can see the colorways and this stitch marker is from my friend Sierra of Owls and Orchids she has an Etsy shop and this is a little oh, sorry it's not really focusing this is a little howler from Harry Potter yeah I can see it it's so sweet and she gifted it to me um gosh a little while ago now and I love it I let it live here so that it can keep me company Let's see here oh Romo wants to come in so anyways this is what I'm currently obsessed with obsessed especially because let me just let him in really quick I have had a lot of garments that I have been really working on the last few months to finish up and get off of my needles and I've successfully done it. I've finished my little twigs, I finished my forager, I finished um, my turtle dove, I finished my sheltered, which I'm gonna show you now. So for me, it's been really nice to look forward to something that wasn't a huge garment that wasn't the same color the whole time i was really kind of um craving color and garter because i always crave garter <laughs> you know what i should do is i should honestly just start a plain garter blanket just back and forth with a fun little edging and just and just have it I, maybe i will who knows but anyways, and I hadn't been using fingering weight yarn in quite a while because I haven't been knitting socks all that much. So it was just kind of nice to step out of the lane of garments and into the lane of blankets slash shawls again. Um, so anyways, that is why it is giving me life. I will be knitting on this for a long time probably, which I am okay with. Um, I also have my granny stripe crochet blanket that I want to get back to now that I have all my garments off of the needles. Um, I'm just really looking forward to the next few months just knitting scrappy, mindless, like no deadlines, no finishing in sight, just kind of enjoy it for the process. That's kind of where I'm at with my making. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that project. I love it. I highly recommend it. I have a project page that I will link down below for any questions about it. I am using size, because I know I'll get this question, size US 6 needles, which is what I believe the pattern calls for. I'm using Haya Haya Sharp interchangeables, which I love. I love their interchangeables. I love their needles in general. And yeah, it's great, especially because I know a lot of you have Halloween advents, Christmas advents, Hanukkah advents, or Hanukkah countdowns, just all of those mini skein countdown calendars. I know a lot of people purchase them. So if you're kind of thinking like, what could I be making with these? I have all these glorious mini skeins. Um, and I know this pattern was designed for that intention last year, but for anybody who m missed the boat on it or is not aware of it, like I was, um, I recommend it. I really, really recommend it. Um, and I was talking with Molly actually, and she had such good advice for me when I started knitting this. She said, you know what, Chelsea, like if you miss one of those yarn over rows, don't tink back. Those rows get insanely long. Just throw the yarn over row in the next time you get the chance to. So I have really taken that to heart. And there are a few sections that are bigger, a few sections that are smaller between the yarn overs, but can you tell? I doubt it. And it, it really has, oh, here's Romy. It really has just made the project so much more enjoyable, not having to stress over like, oh gosh, it's been 10 rows of garter or yeah, 10 rows instead of eight. So I need to think that it's just like, no, none of that calculation needs to happen. It's just, you knit, you knit, you knit, you eyeball it. 
and then you throw a yarn over row in. So I'm gonna pass on that advice from Molly to all of you if you are knitting one or planning on knitting one. Okay, one more thing before I show you my last project that I got off the needles. I don't think anyone can disagree that this time in our life is very challenging. We are being cut off from communities that we are used to being immersed in. We are not out and about. It's starting to get darker. It's starting to get colder. And I think every year, pandemic or not, this is a really challenging time. Um, it's just a challenging time. It's, it's, I know for me, like seasonal affective disorder comes in and it's just like you're very, um, you're much more tired and I don't know. I just, I just know this time of year for me is very challenging. Um, and the pandemic is not making it any easier. And I'm honestly really stressed looking forward into the winter and the fall. Um, because the sunlight's going to be gone. And I love the cold weather. Like, so I'm kind of torn because I love the cold weather. I love the dark. I like that it gets dark earlier. Um, but my body <laughs> doesn't love it. My, my psychological being doesn't love it. Um, I can feel a lot of times, um, I just feel off and funky and, and just not really engaged. Um, so anyways, I wanted to share this resource for you because um, every time I share it, people thank me and they buy it. And I just think this year especially, we could use probably a little bit of just comfort sitting on our nightstand. So I got this book a long time ago. It is called Journey to the Heart by Melody Beatty. Um, there are daily meditations on the path to freeing your soul. Um, she has quite a few good readers or good books i suppose i've only ever had this one and read this one so it's the only one i can recommend um so yes there's a there is a reading for every day of the year let's see what is today today is the 16th tomorrow is my five year wedding anniversary with justin five years five years two kids two different states I can't believe it's been five years. I mean, I can, but it's also just like, wow, it feels huge. Um, so yes, like I said, there's a reading for every single day. And at the end of that reading, there's a little like summarization. Uh, so at the end of today's, it said, if you find yourself on a roller coaster, turn it into the ride of your life. So it's just a lot of like really inspirational readings and kind of it helps you reframe things. Um, and I know some days I read them and it just speaks to my soul and it just kind of helps me if nothing more just get in tune with my inner being um and with my emotions and i think the more i sit with my emotions the easier they are to navigate so anyways i'm going to be cutting a lot of that out because <laughs> it's really hard to get words out about this subject i think um but i thought it was important and i thought if this could help anybody just kind of um as a journal prompt or just as something to kind of help navigate the windy road ahead of us it might be nice so i'll link the amazon or i'll just link the book down below it'll probably be linked to amazon but i would encourage you to shop small if possible so let me show you my last project that i just got off my needles i started this project i bought the yarn for this project at my very first trip to Rhinebeck, which was 2016, I think. Can you believe that? Four years ago. So let me put it on for you. This is called Sheltered by Andrea Mowry. It is a poncho knit. Uh, it is knit out of Blue Moon Fiber Arts in their Targi worsted base. And I believe it is their, oh, I'm not gonna remember the colorway. I can't remember, but the project page is linked down below. Um, their yarn is incredibly affordable, I find. You get over 600 yards for under $40. Amazing, and it's hand-dyed yarn. It's an Andrea Mowry pattern. I don't know if I've said that or not. I had a little bit of a distraction, I apologize. Um, it's knit in pieces, so you knit the front and you knit the back. 
and then I think I have it on the right way I'm not sure oh yes I do um, and then you seam it together and then you pick up the stitches for the, the cowl hood which I need to block this so these two pieces are already blocked but now I need to block the cowl and the hood which I will do this weekend but um yeah it's just really cozy it can double as a mask for anybody that if you forget your mask <laughs> um but yeah I love it it is a fantastic super warm pattern um like I said it's a worsted weight pattern so it moves rather quickly it also gives you the option to tack the two pieces together to create sleeves and just kind of a a more structured garment instead of a poncho I haven't decided if I'm going to tack the sleeves or not, but um, yeah, I just really love it. I'm so happy that it's off the needles after all these years. The thing that was holding me up with this project was I had never mattress stitched anything together before. So I finished the front and the back and I blocked them. <laughs> and then the two pieces that in a project bag for years. Um, until finally this fall, I was doing a little bit of a clean out of my making space and I saw it in there and I was like, this is ridiculous. I want to be able to wear this. I am 90% done with it. So I just did it. One afternoon, I pulled up my chair. I pulled up a mattress stitch tutorial on YouTube and I sat there and I watched a show and... I sewed them together and then I picked up the stitches and the rest is history. The cowl and the hood were so fun to knit. So fun. Um, so yeah, I just love it so much and I figured if anybody is looking for an affordable, um, fun knit that you could wear over anything. I mean, I love, I love a poncho. So anyways. That's all my making. Those are my life updates. Um, Lily's just about done with her quiet time, so I have to go get her now, but um, thank you for being here. I hope you guys have a wonderful, what would have been Rhinebeck weekend. Um, thank you to everybody that shopped our update or is still shopping our update. We did um, a, our Christmas collection was released yesterday. It is based on the movie, The Santa Claus, which we watch well this year who knows but we always watch on thanksgiving night after we we're done eating and we kind of lay by the fireplace and just watch the movie until we fall asleep most of the time um but it's just always the movie that we kick off the christmas season with so it was really fun when mom came up with the idea to um, base our christmas collection on it this year and the colorways are beautiful um, and we also ha um, released sock kits for the red work and stitchery uh, color work sock pattern that our friend Natalie of Remembrances Pottery uh, released. So we have some kits for those available in our shop right now. Um, all through this weekend, it is free domestic shipping um, in the United States. So please take advantage of that um, by using the code SHIPFREEDOMESTIC um, at checkout. Uh, I please, please, please do your best to enter in that code. I can try and go back and retro retroactively do it, but it's going to take some time because we're very busy this weekend trying to keep up with orders and restocking yarn. So um, just do your best to try and remember to put that coupon code in there so that way um, you get the discount. Um, and the last thing I have to mention because I would be remiss if I didn't, um, I have a Patreon page that I do vlogs like this every single week. I also do a lifestyle vlog every month. Um, and I do blog posts. I try to do every week and, um, a Patreon exclusive Instagram account. So if you follow over on Legacy Fiber Arts, you will have seen the last, um, two days now I've been manning the stories. Um, I like to just share my day-to-day -day experience. It's a lot of lifestyle, a lot of family um, with making as well. So if you're interested in any of those things, feel free to head out down to my Patreon link below. Click it and see if you um, 
if you might want to join the community we have a really lovely community of makers over there i love them all so much if you guys are watching hey thank you for allowing me to release this vlog i know um this is typically a patreon only uh style vlog so but i wanted to get something out for everybody this weekend because this is a challenging year and i know everyone is really missing the festivities um so hopefully i was able to keep you company for a little bit while you were making and yes thank you for being here with me have a great great weekend and i wish mom was here for this like we always say needles up bye you guys <laughs> hey, babe.